Hi folks, Jack Spierko here with another survival podcast video. Today we're going to be doing this harvesting some corn. This is a bantam corn, uh, meaning it's kind of small. It's got smaller ears, and it's known as triple play sweet corn. And uh, I like to share my successes with you. I like to share my failures with you, and I like to share my sort of success, sort of failures with you. This is one of the third kind. This is sort of a success, sort of a failure. Um, this is a hard corn to grow in a very small plot. I've only got uh, eight square feet taking it up here, and it's a bantam corn, so it doesn't yield very large ears to begin with. But we did get a yield, and uh, I'm going to go through and harvest all this corn today. And uh, I was hoping to show you some damage here, but this ear is actually in pretty good shape. So I'll see if I can find another ear. You can see, actually, I can show you some of the, the failure, I guess you would say here. If you look right there, you can see that it didn't get a full pollination. It's got some underdeveloped kernels, but this will be good eating anyway. And uh, give me a second. I'll see if I can find you my big problem this year uh, with this corn. And I'll be telling you what we're going to do about our silver queen over here to keep that from happening if I can find uh, the problem. I can see that this one has the problem I speak of. Corn earworms. There's one of the little buggers there. So let's uh, see him right there. That little guy right there. Now if I had chickens, uh, he would make uh, good fodder for them. Let me show you, here's another brown one. What they do to the corn. They just absolutely decimate it. They eat it. Uh, this ear, very little to any that can be saved uh, out of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the whole crop here. I'm going to take all the corn in because i got so much infested uh, with these worms that, uh, well, I'm going to lose a lot of the crop. And even though it's not all fully developed, I'm going to go ahead and take it. And uh, that one, there's just nothing left of it. But most of them, I, uh, the worms tend to eat just the top of the ear first. So what I can do is go through and cut the parts that the, the worms have ruined off. I'll cut all the stalks out for composting, and I'll tell you about what we're going to be doing with this area now that it's being freed up. This is succession as the next planting uh, going forward in the year. So I'm back, and this time I'm on the other side of the camera, and since I'm alone, I think this will work better. Well, you can see uh, this was a lot more work than your half second of waiting for it to come up. Uh, I've cut down all the corn stalks. You can see the vacant spot there. The plants in the front are now getting a lot more sun. Let me show you what I actually got as a yield. And it's not terrible, but it's not good either. Let's uh, get where my shadow won't get in the way here. You can see this is, uh, it's not bad corn, but you can see I lost a lot of the tops of it. And um, let's see if I can find one here. You can see I took that little piece there mainly because you can see the little bit of blue there. That's where this corn gets its name is triple play. It's actually a white, yellow, and blue corn. And... Uh, I guess it's not as bad as it looks because we ate at least that much of it already, but my wife's going to be disappointed. She's absolutely loved this corn. An awful lot of it ended up like this. And that's just from the corn borers. And then a lot of it was not fully developed. A lot of these ones that are maybe only that long, the whole top wasn't fully developed yet. And uh, it was either harvest it now and get half an ear or harvest it later and get nothing. But suffice to say, good thing we're not going to survive on this, right? Um, over here... You'll see a stand. This is Silver Queen. This is a hybrid. And this should do better. It's planted a little bit denser, uh, but a bigger area. It's a full 4x8 bed. It's a hybrid, so it's got a little bit more vigor. And uh, when it gets ready to start tasseling, we're going to be treating it with a mixture of a little bit of corn oil and some BT, which is a naturally occurring bacteria uh, that is usable for organic use to prevent corn uh, borers. Now, BT is also used by... Um, people like Monsanto in genetic engineering where they engineer the corn to produce its own BT. That I'm not cool with, but adding it a little bit uh, in an organic matter just to uh, rectify it I think will work. So we'll let you know how this uh, stand of corn does. Hopefully it'll produce better for us, bigger ears, uh, more conventional planting. What I've learned with this stuff here is uh, it, it's a great heirloom variety corn, but it's not suited for the small home gardener. You really need a much larger plot. I wouldn't do anything less than 8x8. But all of that good stuff is going to turn into compost. Also, I wanted to show you some of the things that are going on here that are actually pretty cool. Um, when you look at this, it's just like an empty bed. There's a lot of volunteer action going here. Volunteer is stuff that just shows up from the year before uh, that you didn't really plant. Right here, this is tomatillo. 
which are those little green things that look like tomatoes that make awesome salsa. Um, it's kind of spindly, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be coming in uh, here and putting in a trellis like this one behind me. So I'll be training that tomatillo, and there's another one over there up onto that trellis. There's also a little bit of volunteer basil right here. Uh, there's some volunteer basil in a couple areas. This right here is Malabar red spinach, which you might recognize from uh, video last year. I didn't plant any, but it's growing on its own. So um, you also notice that the ground is very wet here. I just watered this. These volunteers and these plants that have been in here have been shaded, so that's been in too much shade. That's why they're not doing very well. But you can kill them with kindness, and they can get too much... Uh, too much sun right away so I immediately watered them and I'll water this heavy for the next few days until they adapt uh, there's also here is a uh, where is it that is nothing now uh, there were some volunteer uh, what do you call them nasturtiums in here somewhere I'm not sure where they're at now there's a little bit of volunteer basil right there down here this is marigold so we've got a volunteer marigold Here's our other tomatillo right there. We got some fire engine action going on in the background. And now that those guys are done uh, blaring their sirens, you can see the big upshot here is I now have all of this space freed up. Uh, some things that are already started there that I'll just encourage. But I'll probably come in, in this front row here and I'll probably plant some bush beans and some more pepper plants. Along the back I'll be doing some uh, Asian yard long beans and some other uh, plants that'll be trellised. I'll also leave a couple of spaces uh, open for my next planting of uh, vining squash. Uh, over here, and I have this in another video that I'm working on for you as well, you'll see a beautiful stand of uh, trombone zucchini squash. Um, as much as it pains me to say it, this, this squash's days are numbered. I'm doing everything I can to protect it from squash vine borers, but they're a real problem around here, and eventually uh, this, this beautiful vine will succumb to the vine borers. When it does, I'll cut it down, and in its place, I'll plant something else that's trellising a short season crop like beans uh, that will be able to go into our fall. But what will happen is over here, I'll go ahead and put in that new trellis uh, for all of the plants that are going to be there. And that's where I'm going to be starting uh, some new squash right now. Why do I do that? There's a window in between when the vine borers actually come out as moths and lay their eggs and hatch. Uh, once you get through June, you can plant squash again. You can have to worry about squash bugs, but really not the vine borers, which are really the real problem again. So there you go. That's kind of uh, everything in action, what's going on here today. Again, we got, uh, what is that, 16 square feet now freed up for new plantings. And uh, I've got a lot of work to do. I'll get on it. We'll get back with you with another video soon.